All right, so today I want to introduce you to the ghost ball python. The ghost is kind of interesting. Essentially what it does is it takes a snake and it kind of washes out the color and pattern, gives it almost like a creamy appearance. And if you actually go over to Morph Market where they have tens of thousands of ball pythons for sale, and you look at the top three most popular recessives as far as the numbers over on Morph Market, the number one is the pied, number two is the clown, number three, believe it or not, is the ghost. And there's actually different lines of ghosts. Today I'm just going to talk about the regular ghost, the base ghost mutation. There's actually two different lines. There's the green ghost and the orange ghost. I actually did a video on the orange ghost. And essentially what that does is it kind of fades out the snake, but it also gives it an orange, kind of an enhanced orange color, where, where the regular ghost doesn't give any kind of a color change. It just kind of fades it out. And the three lines of ghosts are not compatible. So if you actually took an orange ghost and you bred it to just the regular ghost, you'd actually get double head ghost and orange ghost. You wouldn't actually get a visual. They're not compatible. And the other thing you want to be careful of is confusing it with the desert ghost. Uh, you can, there's actually, you know, the desert ghost is actually a single recessive mutation. Can also be confused with the desert gene, which is dominant, and then the recessive ghost. So you can actually have two different types of desert ghost. One one with a desert and the ghost and the other one with the recessive desert ghost. So those are completely different. They're not really ghosts per se, according to what we're talking about today. We're talking just about the regular ghost ball python. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to Morph Market and I want to show you the effects and some of the potential that the ghost can have with ball pythons. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on MorphMarket.com, and I want to start with just the normal, classic, wild-type ball python. Essentially, this is what you'd find if you're over in West Africa looking for wild ball pythons in the wild. Essentially, what you'd find is something like this. This is actually what happens when you add ghosts to a normal ball python. Take a look at this. Essentially, what it does is it just fades it out, makes it really kind of, gives it kind of like a creamy color. And the interesting thing about this one is it almost, looks like it might be a little bit orange so if you're actually investing into a ghost project you want to double check and make sure that you have the right line of ghosts so for example if, if people kind of lose track of the different lines and you went out and you bought a green ghost and an orange ghost and a regular ghost and you started mixing them together you know all the offspring would actually not look like ghosts they would actually be double heads for both lines of ghosts so you really want to make sure that you know which line of ghosts you're getting into when you buy into the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through some of the base genes, some of the more common genes in ball pythons, show you the base gene first, and then I want to show you what happens when we add ghosts to that gene. So the first one I want to look at is the pastel. The pastel is kind of interesting because you can actually have a lot. There's actually a lot of different lines of pastel. There's some that are really super bright, like this one here. This one is probably one of the brightest yellow. As a matter of fact, it almost looks like it might be, I was thinking maybe a little Photoshop, but if you look at the head, it doesn't really look that yellow. It looks like a really bright line of pastel. Some of them aren't as bright, and most of them I'd say kind of fade out as they get older. This is what happens when you you mix ghost with pastel take a look at this this is a ghost pastel and the interesting thing about ghosts they also call it hypo so if you have something hypo or hypo in the name you know you have ghost and as far as I know all the ghosts are actually recessive mutations you actually need two copies of the gene to get a visual ghost and I'd say this is I don't know when you first look at it it's kind of funny because when you first get into ball pythons you always want the really high high contrast snakes, something that's really bright and real high contrast. And then after you see all these high contrast snakes year after year after year, you almost start longing for something else besides the high contrast. And this kind of, it seems like it kind of grows on you over the years. At first I was like, you know, the regular pastel, when you first look at it, it looks maybe a little more impressive to the novice, but actually once you start getting into it, you almost start wishing that you can have these creamy looking snakes that have this kind of of a kind of a washed out pattern. I think it's really attractive. It seems like the more I'm into ball pythons, the more attractive some of these ghosts actually look. 
Here's another one. This is one of my favorites. This is a pinstripe, probably the goldest snake you can get. This is actually a dominant mutation, so if you breed it to something, half the offspring come out as pinstripe. This is what happens when you mix ghost with pinstripe. You get a hypo pinstripe, and you can definitely tell that the ghost is in there. Really washes it out and kind of reduces a lot of the gold color. It's kind of an interesting combination. Here's another one. This is a Mojave. Mojave's in the blue-eyed leucista complex. So if you actually breed two Mojaves together, 25% of the time you'll actually get an all-white snake with blue eyes. Or if you mix the Mojave with the Lesser, the Russo, or some of the other morphs in the blue-eyed leucistic, you also get the white snakes. This is what happens when you take Ghost, mix it in with Mojave. Take a look at this. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of interesting because you can tell it really keeps the Mojave color and pattern doesn't really change the color and pattern just kind of washes it out as a matter of fact if you took a Mojave that was almost ready to go into a shed it would pretty much look like this it almost looks like the the ghost almost looks almost exactly like a snake going into shed in some cases which is pretty interesting Here's another one. This is the Butter. It's pretty much the same thing as the Lesser. This is also in the Blue-Eyed Leucista Complex. This is what happens when you add Ghost with the Butter. You get a Butter Ghost, which is pretty awesome. And in this case, it seems like it really reduces a lot of the intensity of the snake, really washes it out. And it seems like, the, it almost seems like there's different lines of Ghost, or maybe it's just mixed with different genes. Sometimes it has a really large effect on the appearance, and sometimes Sometimes it doesn't have much of an effect at all. Here's another one that's pretty cool. This is the spider. The spider is, you have to really be careful of the spider because you don't want to breed two spiders together because the super spider is a lethal combination. But I'd say as far as one of the most impressive standalone morphs, the spider has to be close to the top. It's a really awesome snake. This is what happens when you take ghost and you breed it into a lesser. You get what is known as the honeybee, which is kind of the slang for a ghost plus the spider. Usually when we say B, we mean the, the, the spider gene, and usually we say hypo for ghosts, but in this case this is kind of a unique, kind of a, a slang just for this specific combo, the honeybee. And I think it looks really impressive. As a matter of fact, it seems like it's bringing even color down into the white part of the snake down here, which is kind of interesting. It definitely makes for an, an impressive snake. I think I, one, this is probably one of my favorite combos is the honeybee. Here's another one, the caramel albino. The caramel albino is kind of interesting. I think it really was popular early on when the ball python craze was happening. And then it kind of fell out of popularity because there's some problems with the morph. It tends to have kinking in certain lines. But as far as what I've heard about the caramel albino, you can actually breed out or line breed for the kinking versus, you know, if you're talking about spiders and the head wobble, you really can't line breed it out as far as I know. And I'm actually working with caramel albino shooting for my first scaleless head visual caramel albinos this year this is also a recessive mutation so when we actually add ghost to it take a look at this this is actually the caramel glow which is a caramel albino and the ghost sometimes when you add ghost into some of these mixes they also kind of have a slang where they call it glow like the caramel glow this is actually pretty hard to hit because it's actually a double recessive you have the caramel albino and the ghost and it's kind of interesting on some of these some are really inexpensive and sometimes they can be really high end when you start mixing ghost with other combos so here's another one. This is actually an Enchi, just the base morph Enchi. And I think Enchi goes really good with almost everything. And essentially what Enchi does is it reduces the pattern. In most cases, like on a normal, you see kind of like the Roswell gray alien head patterns on the size of the snake. And the Enchi essentially gets rid of all of the, the alien heads, kind of reduces the pattern. And in some cases, it actually enhances the yellow or the orange. Certain lines of Enchi actually 
it kind of enhanced that. And what I really like, probably my favorite Anchi combo is if you actually breed two Anchis together, you get a super Anchi, which is a super reduced pattern on the snake. It makes for a really good base for a lot of combos. This is what happens when you mix Ghost in with Anchi. Take a look at this, you get the Anchi Ghost. And in this case, you can almost see the, the kind of the orange color that's coming through. I'm pretty sure that is from the specific line of Enchi. A lot of times, they'll actually bring in a lot of that color. In this case, you can see it fades out a little bit, but not quite as intense as some of the other ghost combos. Here's another one I've actually I almost got into this project. This is the tri-stripe. It's another recessive mutation. And essentially what it does is it, it puts stripes right down the back of the snake. Makes for a really impressive, pretty much, I don't think there's anything else you can really get close to a tri-stripe as far as the pattern. It's a recessive mutation. So if you actually add goes to a tri-stripe, take a look at this. This is really pretty impressive. You actually have a double recessive combination and it really fades out it's the intense black line that goes down the back and it almost seems like the more black and intense you have in a snake the more it really fades it out with the ghost Here's another one that's pretty cool. This is actually a clown, just the base clown. And I'd say clown is probably in, you know, one of the most popular morphs. And when you first look at clown, you, it's, it's actually a recessive mutation. And a lot of people, when they look at it, they're like, that's not really that impressive. Why would you actually buy a clown? And I think the clown is probably the king of combos when it comes to recessive combos. It works really well with a lot of other genes. And when you start mixing other genes with clown, you get some really amazing combos and here's what happens when you actually mix ghost in with clown take a look at this this is really awesome it actually really enhances the snake gives it a really creamy looking color and in this case it seems like it jumbles up the pattern quite a bit compared to just the regular clown pattern really awesome snake so here's the last one I want to show you. This is actually a super blackhead. The super blackhead's kind of interesting because it gives you almost a jet black snake with some of the streaking right down the sides. And here's what happens when you add ghosts to the super blackhead. Take a look at this. It takes the really dark black and it really fades it out. Almost gives you like a gray looking snake, which is a really impressive combo. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Nolan Campbell asks, has anyone ever produced a snake with more than one line of a xanthic in one snake? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I would think, you know, there's actually, <laughs> There's actually been quite a few people that have proposed that actually taking two incompatible lines of axanthic and make a visual in one snake. And I think on the surface, it sounds kind of interesting. What if you actually had a snake that was a visual for like VPI axanthic and TSK axanthic in the same snake? It would be kind of awesome. No one's ever produced it as far as I know. But as far as the logistics of actually producing something like that, you kind of have to think about, all right, if you actually took the two different lines and bred them together, you would get double heads. And if you actually took the double heads and bred them together and you actually got the visuals, the problem is, is you probably wouldn't know if it was the visual, if it was a TSK Xanthic, or if it was a VPI Xanthic, or maybe a double A Xanthic, unless it was really different than the singles. So the only way to actually prove that you actually have one line or another would be to actually take those and and breed them back to something that you know for sure. And then you get heads and possible heads for the other lines. I think the, the genes and the genetics would really get muddy the further down the road you get. And you get to the point where I think you'd be a little exasperated because you'd have all these axanthics and you weren't sure what lines they would come from. And a lot of them wouldn't be compatible. So I think logistically it would kind of be a nightmare, but I think it'd be kind of an interesting project to follow if it wasn't so complicated. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.